Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, we're going to uh, look at some examples using the equation that we talked about yesterday in the notes, the conservation of energy equation. Um, there are uh, two pages of examples, so we'll kind of work through all of them. Uh, there's a few different ones. So we go from pendulums to a uh, snowboarder um, to a box on a ramp, just some different ideas where we might use this conservation of energy equation. Uh, it is really um, applicable and um, you know we can use it in a lot of different situations. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, as a, as a re quick refresher from yesterday, let's go ahead and rewrite um, our conservation of energy equations as well as our equation for uh, potential and kinetic energy. Um, so re recall that uh, for kinetic energy of an object, uh, it's one half times the mass times the velocity squared. And also recall that the potential energy gravitation, PEG, for an object is m times g times h, where g is positive 9.8, and height is our relative height from zero. Um, then our conservation of energy equation says that our kinetic energy initial plus our potential energy initial. So our basically our, our initial energy uh, is going to be equal to our final energy. Uh, PEG final, PEG initial. Um, so we can write this a different way in terms of these equations here where we can say, well, let's just go right into these equations. One half mv initial squared plus mg uh, h initial equals one half mv final squared plus mg h final. All right, and so this is kind of going to be our starting point for most of these equations. Sometimes the question will ask you, hey, what's the kinetic energy uh, initially? And you just have to solve this one term. Um, or maybe you you know you plug in the other energies and you just solve for this. So you don't always necessarily have to start with this form. Sometimes you're gonna you're gonna start with that one, but it just kind of depends. So, um, all right, let's look at example number one. It says a pendulum is moving at 5.6 meters per second um, at the bottom most point of its swing. So a pendulum is you know uh, some object, some mass on a string uh, that will swing forward and reach some other point here. And then it will continue to swing until it reaches another point here, at which case it will then begin to swing backwards. All right, so a pendulum is moving 5.6 meters per second at the bottom most point of its swing. So when it's here, velocity 5.6 meters per second, traveling in either direction doesn't matter. What will be the maximum height reached by the pendulum? So if we release it from rest here, swings through 5.6 meters per second, swings through, um, velocity becomes zero here. Basically, what's the height here that it reaches? So what we're going to do here is we're going to define this point right here to be height equals zero. Um, again, this might be a, you know this might be hanging three feet off the ground, but there's no point in really saying setting this to anything but zero. We're just finding the height relative to the bottom of the swing, because then whatever you know whatever height this is at, we could just add that number in. You know, if if the floor is all the way down here, let's say, and you know, and this height here is like three three meters or something like that, then we could just say it's three meters plus h. But you know. To simplify it, we don't even need to worry about that. All right, so we're just going to set this height to be zero. All right, so uh, what will be the maximum height? So we're going to be looking for, in this case, height final. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to say this is our initial point, and this is our final point. So what is h final? So let's start with this equation here. Um, notice that each of these terms has a mass in it. So because this problem does not give us a mass, we can actually cancel all those masses out. And we don't even have to worry about writing them in. All right. So I'm just going to start with 1 half uh, mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals 1 half mv final squared plus mgh final. And like I said, I'm going to cancel all the masses out. 
divide by m, it gets rid of all those. Right? Now, which of these terms is zero? Well, if two is my final point, then v final will be zero, which means this guy, since this is zero, this entire term is canceled out. This one half mv final uh, squared plus uh, mgh final, this, this term is going to be equal to zero, so we can cancel it out. Um, the first term has a height of zero. So this is h initial, which means this whole thing, this is zero, which means this whole term goes to zero. So we don't need this either. So I actually have two terms as zero, which means I only really need to worry about this first term and this last term. One half, what is my v initial? 5.6. Um, times g times h final. And h final is what we're looking for. Uh, multiply that through, divide both sides by 9.8, and solve for h final. And you get a value of 1.6 meters. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, example number two. Hopefully that was, that was pretty clear how we did that. We're going to basically do the same thing for a lot of these other examples. Start with this conservation of energy equation and work from there. Um, if you'd like to pause the video now and try number two, see if you can figure out how to do it, then you know go ahead and uh, pause it, try it out, and then check your work. Um, otherwise, you can just follow along with me here. Um, so a snowboarder starts and rests at the top of a 125 meter tall mountain. Let's use blue for this. So, um, actually, there's my cool purple snow. All right, uh, so the height of the mountain where they're at, 125 meters. Uh, they go down this slope, and we want to know how fast they're going here, be fine. Uh, so they start from rest, so they're up here, and they're just going to slide down the mountain. Um, that means this has a height of zero. So we're setting the bottom height to zero, the top height to 125. This is point number one. This is point number two. So that's h final, this is h initial, v initial, v final, right? And uh, just plugging into that equation. So again, uh, starting with this, um, I'm actually not even gonna write the masses in because we know they're gonna cancel out. So I'm just taking the same equation, but just the masses all cancel. Um, so V initial is zero. So this time this term is zero. So I don't need that. And H final is zero. So this time this term is zero. So I don't need that. So what I'm left with is G H initial 125 times 9.8 equals, uh, one half. And then V final squared is what we're looking for. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by two. To get rid of the one half, and then I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square, and I'm left with v final equals uh, 49.5 meters per second. All right, and that's all there is to it. All right, number three, um, very similar idea here. A box is placed on a frictionless ramp, which is eight meters long. If the box is released from rest, how fast will it be moving at the bottom of the ramp? All right, um, they tell this, assume the, the ramp has a, a angle of 25 degrees with the ground. So this is very, very, very similar to the last one, but there's one extra step we have to do before we can solve it. When we set this up, it says that the ramp is eight meters long. So we know that this distance here is eight meters, the hypotenuse. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I'll have to edit that out. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we know the distance of the ramp is eight meters and the angle is 25 degrees. which means that um, we can actually figure out the height uh, by using our right triangle trig. 
So this height is going to be 25, or sorry, 8 uh, cosine 25, the opposite over hypotenuse. So this is 8 cosine 25 degrees, which gives us a height of 3.38 meters. All right, so that's going to be our height initial. Uh, our height finals will still be zero, and our V final is still unknown, and our V initial is still zero. All right, and everything else is the same as last problem. Uh, this one half MV initial squared. This term goes to zero because V initial is zero. Uh, MGH initial, and then one half MV final squared plus. MGH final, and this term goes to zero. Uh, again, M's will cancel. And so we're left with 9.8 times 3.38 equals one half V final squared. Multiply both sides by two, and then take the square root. And V final equals uh, 8.14 meters per second. All right, uh, let's keep going, chugging along here. Uh, number four, a projectile is launched at an angle of 45 degrees from the top of a 265 meter cliff with a speed of 185 meters per second. Using conservation of energy, what will its speed be when it strikes the ground below? Uh, if you wanna try something fun, uh, try and solve this using uh, kinematics. See how long it takes you. Um, one, because we haven't done kinematics for a while, but two, it actually is a little bit more difficult than just using basic energy principles. Um, so we can actually solve this with energy a lot more easily. This is a, a problem that we've, we've done before, um, actually, but it's, it's very, very much, much more simpler. Uh, so this is a 265 meter cliff. So we're going to set this height initial to be 265. And we're going to set this height final to be zero. The projectile is launched, travels and lands. Um, it has this angle of 45 degrees and it has an initial speed of 185 meters per second. This is our VI. And we wanna know how fast is it going when it strikes the ground. All right. Uh, so again, in these in these problems, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and not write in the mass. So we have one half v initial squared plus uh, g h initial equals uh, one half v final squared plus g h final. The only one that's gonna be zero here is this one here, h final. The rest of them have values. We have an unknown. Uh, 265 and 185. So one half times 185 squared plus 9.8 times 265 equals one half V final squared. So again, we're going to multiply by both sides by two to cancel this out, but you have to make sure that you do what's in the right hand side first. So the two will like cancel out with the one half, but you'll have to distribute it to that one. Um, and then and then take the square root, and if you do that math, you'll get 198.5 meters per second is its new speed. All right. Uh, a sanity check for this one is make sure that this number is larger than that number, and if it is, then you know you're good to go. All right. And finally, our last question for today. Uh, example five: A roller coaster shown above or shown below in the figure, is pulled up to a point A, where its screaming occupants are released from rest. So we're starting, this is our starting point here. Assuming the track is frictionless, uh, calculate the speed at points B, C, and D. So what we're going to do is essentially set an initial height somewhere to be zero. Um, somewhere that makes a lot of sense is this very bottom part. So that means the height at, at point B is going to be zero. Um, the height at point A is going to be 30. The height at point C is going to be 25. And the height at point D is going to be 12. All right. 
we also have initial we also have velocities the only one we know is the initial is going to be zero at a um now what we're going to be doing is we're going to basically say okay this is my initial point here and then i have three different final points that i have to do this so i'm gonna to have to do three conservation of energy equations i'm gonna to have to do that one then i'm gonna set point two to there and then finally i'm gonna set point two to there actually let's do these in three different colors so let's do make this point two and then we'll make this point three all right so starting with um point one uh, calculate the, the speed at point two at the bottom of this hill. All right, same idea from where we start. One half, kind of get rid of the M's. All right, one half V initial squared plus GH equals, oops, not plus. equals all right um v initial is zero so this part of the term goes away and uh the other and the other one that's going to go away in part so i'm going to basically say okay this is my initial starting point for each of these um since my initial is always going to be 30 then i can do 9.8 times 30 and this is going to equal one half v final squared plus 9.8 times whatever the height value is all right so i can use this equation for all three points plugging in the different height value of each one so for this first part for for point b the the bit the only thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in zero for this height which means that this term goes away and we're just left with this 9.8 times 30 equals one half v final squared because this is zero. Uh, and so solving for v final there, we get 24.25 meters per second. Um, in number, in part C, um, we should see that the speed decreases because it's, it's going up to this height of 25. So this, again, we're going to start with this starting point right here. This is our starting point at e for each one. Um, but now we're going to plug in uh, 9.8 times 25. Okay. When you're pulling in these calculators, uh, make sure you multiply this first together and then subtract it. So multiply this together, subtract it from this side. Um, another way you can think about this is um, if, if I subtract this term, um, to get rid of it from this side, um, then what I'm left with on this side is 9.8 times 30. Uh, minus 9.8 times 25, which you can factor out the 9.8, and it's 30 minus 25, which is another way of writing 9.8 times 5. So we'll equal one half v final squared. So what you can actually do is you can you can um, just find a change in height in this problem. The change in height from here to here is 5. So I could just do 9.8 times 5 equals one half v final squared. Just like I did, the change in height from here to here is 30. And basically what you're what you would be doing is you would be redefining the height here to be zero, which means the height here would only be five. And so you're plugging in 9.8 times five and then 9.8 times zero. And the math works out either way. So it, this is like a little bit of a shortcut and we'll actually do this for the next one. But uh, our velocity at point C will be 9.9 .9 meters per second. All right, and then finally for part D, where it reaches a height of 12, we're gonna do the shortcut for this. If I say, okay, let's make this height zero, then that means this height here, if this was at 12 and this was at 30, then that means this height would be 18. 
And so what I can do is instead of plugging 9.8 times 30, I can say 9.8 times uh, 18 equals one half v final squared. And then I don't need this other term. Again, this just makes the math a little bit more simple. If you don't uh, understand why this works, you know, write it out the long way. But if you'd like and you see why this works, then it'll save you a little bit of time. Um, and then this one should give you a velocity of 18.8 uh, .8 meters per second. All right, so if we look at just energy types at each of these points, so up here at point A, we just had potential energy, no kinetic. Here we have all kinetic, no potential. Here we have both kinetic and potential, and here we have both kinetic and potential. But there's going to be more uh, kinetic energy here and more potential energy here. And if I were to sum these energies up at each point in time, calculate them and sum them, I'd get the same total energy, just like we did with that rock problem in the notes yesterday. All right, so those are conservation of energy equations. Uh, on Thursday and Friday, I'm going to have you guys work on a problem set and solve some of these so you'll get some practice. All right, that's it. Um, I will uh, talk to you later.